Binge, worst wedding videographer experience as a photographer. Go. Oh, as a photographer? Yes. Okay. There was one time. This I love this as I was this is starting. Uh, I had a team of eight videographers, I think. Eight. Um, eight. And I was the only I was the only photographer, and there was eight videographers, and they ran it like a production, which keep whatever. the mic close, like eat that mic. Oh, I, I uh, okay. Get it. In okay. There. Well, anyway, they they treated it like a production, very much production in terms of like every single thing that happened had to be redone twice yes. or three times. They did the first look six times. No. Yeah. Because they okay. did the real the first one, and then they had to have them drive up again. Then they had to do a drone one. Then they had to do a follow shot. And then I don't know how many other things they did. But everything took like 17 times longer than it ever should have. How did so, the bride and groom feel about that? So they... I think they were okay with it. Okay. But it was, it was weird. Yeah, yeah. Then you're it was, lucky you had that type of bride and groom then. Because yeah. I know some would be like, so they did, we're like done. A, yeah. They did a same day edit and everything. Oh, and it was, okay, it was okay. nuts. Like they okay. were filming, I don't remember what camera, but they were, you know, shooting like 700 frames a second of like the ring falling mm. down and everything. Like it looked unreal, but it was very much, for my way of working, is very like candid and I want everything yeah. to feel really natural. And so it was, uh, yeah, a lot. Just overly me. produced. Overly produced, yeah, yeah. which is fine. Like I always say, if that's what people are expecting, yep. and they know that going into it, and that's what they want their experience to be like, totally fine. Like more power to you. But like that's just the opposite of how I get things done. Yeah. So it makes those things make it way harder, right? And I feel like also them hiring you as the photographer, yeah, knowing yeah. like, okay, we're gonna hire this super overproduced yeah. videographer, but also there's binge. Yeah, just binge. He's yeah. here. He's got his camera. Yeah, yeah, with this huge crew, and then me with my tiny little Leica cameras and stuff. Like, what are you doing? What's happening? But, but I. So that I mean, they're just everything like that's a learning experience, right? Where then you go, okay, next time. Now I'm gonna try to communicate well to every couple yeah. Yeah. to make sure, like, hey, if you guys haven't already chosen a filmmaker or whatever, like, here's here's how I work. Let's try to find things that are working in a similar way so we can all get the things we need, right? Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. Every yeah, every every thing that happens badly on a wedding day is just an opportunity for you to prevent that happening again. I always yeah, yeah, find absolutely. that. Always, yeah. It's, it's how you learn. Yeah, yeah, of course. Every wedding, I'm like, well, that was something I screwed up. Yeah. Okay, time to change that. Okay. Like, yep. Yep. The first like 20 weddings I did was, well, need to buy that piece of gear to offset that. Okay, like mm -hmm. I need to buy that. Mm -hmm. oh, the amount of audio cables I've had to buy just to like, well, I might run into this kind of speaker. Yeah. Okay. And then literally, uh, earlier this year, I was filming a wedding and for the first time in like, seven years the dj has a connection that i don't have and i'm like how does this happen like i have so many cables how did they not have this cable <laughs> we've got we this are. so well most of the weddings that we shoot are in the country right yeah and uh, we've got this one dj who's like the nicest dj in the mm. world but he's so old school everything is cds okay yes. he uses the most old school system that there is no physical way to connect to his audio source so yes. everything is lav mics over the speakers Incredible. hope for the best and like <laughs> it's yeah but he's the nicest guy in the world but like every time it happens I'm like oh okay here he's, we go uh, yeah it's canadian weddings oh my gosh yeah. do you that's do that amazing. as a safety sometimes i used to yeah so now i have multiple I've, so. I've definitely been i've been i've shot like photography i haven't done the video at weddings and i noticed a lot of videographers will like gaff tape a yep. lav mic to the speaker and yep. i'm like i don't know how it's gonna sound bro but i mean i guess that's a backup if you need it it it, it has worked it does sound well like, good yeah, yeah the yeah. capsules in those tiny yeah. lavs like, i'm just concerned yep. it's gonna like rattle that? on that's the... interesting yeah there's a company instamic they make these little tiny little microphones and with magnetic attachments and I, you can let just just pop it right onto yeah. a speaker grill and it'll it'll pick it up it's pretty cool yep. what do you typically use for a backup if you like, what do I not use? Yeah, for how, many how, you, how many sources backups? do you use? Yeah. At like a do you stick a mic on the other mic that's your own mic? <laughs> I will. So, uh, like, say ceremony. What yes. do you use for audio? Uh, typically, there will be at least five sources of audio at the ceremony. I will double mic the groom, put two labs on him, recording two separate recorders. I will put two on the efficient, and then I will put one on the bride. Okay. Um, but if it is a windy wedding, like, and I've had weddings where it's super windy, I will put, uh, I've put, I believe, three on the efficient, 
and I'll just put them deeper and Dang, deeper. Yeah. And so I had like one super windy. And so like I had like the outer jacket, just like, who knows? I know this yeah. one's screwed yeah. over. I'm just like, good luck. Okay, that's ruined. <laughs> just, and something. then I'm like, okay, we're going to go underneath your shirt. Okay. And I'm like, so this is going under the undershirt. Like this is, yeah. this is skin, skin contact here. Like as deep as I can get. And it sounds like wedding, a Charlie Brown teacher. She's yes. Like, <laughs> but, the, but that wedding, yeah. the wind was so bad. They, they had the house audio. It's outside on this golf course. It's also on the takeoff path for Dallas oh, no. Fort Worth International Airport. So you just have like <laughs> planes coming overhead. So it's just this horrible mix. And their audio for the ceremony was just nearly beloved. I was like, well, oh, that's no. ruined. Like they nobody could hear a out. thing from that ceremony. And I went through and I'm like, well, that one's screwed. Go, go deeper. Like, okay, that one's screwed. And then I'm like at the deepest level of the mic and it's resonant. It's bassy, but I can bring up the treble yeah. and it worked. Fixed and I was like, wild. Yeah. I was that did. the one on the body? Yeah. Like nice. the body yeah. one saved me. It was incredible. Have I, you, I was going to say, have you ever had to overdub something? Have you ever tried that or needed to like sent someone or had someone come in and ADR? redo something like, yes. Uh, that was another super windy wedding in, uh, where was that at? Oh gosh. Uh, Victoria ticks is down at, down near uh, near the Gulf, wonderful couple, super nice. Um, paid me in cash. I was like, "Thank you." I'm going to the ATM right cash now with this <laughs> with That's this envelope of money. Thank you. I do not want to. My favorite thing is when they pay you in cash day of because they think it's funny. Yes, and then you're like, "But I'm I just got here." But I'm what going to get gonna mugged. Do? Put this in my car. Yep. Like, am I going to carry it all day? Like, it just goes in the camera bag, and I'm like, "Don't yep. lose the camera bag." Yep. Okay, we lose that. We lose everything. But uh, <laughs> literally, it was so windy. Thirty mile per hour winds. The couple was this really, really sweet older couple. They already had had kids. Like they were, I think it's like their second marriage, but they're like some of the nicest people. And the wind was like 35 mile per hour winds just gusting through there. Outdoor ceremony. Bride's son fell in the fountain right after the ceremony. Just great oh, no. stuff. Um, but that audio, I was like, this audio is just gone. Even with all my backups, I'm like, it's gone. So I literally went back to the hotel that night, listened to it. And I knew the couple hadn't left for their honeymoon yet. And I was like, hey, uh, I called her the next morning. The bride I was like, hey, um, listen, the, the audio for the ceremony is very windy, as I'm sure you remember. Um, could I come over and re-record your vows? And she's like, sure, okay. And so like, I literally went to their house and had them both stand in their bedroom, which had nice acoustics with all the carpet and everything in the bed. Mm -hmm. And had them lay down on the bed. No, I didn't have them. <laughs> 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 what was happening? Uh, and then I was like, I need you two to like, look at each other and read your vows to each other. Mm. And it was like so cool to see how emotional they got in that moment. Cause they were like reliving mm. what they did yesterday yeah. and the cadence and the emotion matched Oh dang! to the point that wow. I was able just to lip sync it. Wow. And oh. I was getting like five to 10 second clips that actually like the lips matched because dang. it was so fresh in their minds. I'm like, thank God. That's okay, so good. good. Yeah. But even like more practically, like I, I have other friends that have had it ruined and they literally tell the bride like, hey, I need you to like go into your closet because it's like got mm -hmm. great acoustics yeah, yeah. in there. Get your phone yeah, with the memos same. app, mm -hmm. talk into your phone, send me the audio file. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Save you too. So crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Lee, why don't you like doing weddings? What's wrong with you? <laughs> so it comes down to um, the pressure, I think. Ooh. I don't like the pressure of having to get it perfect yep so like i'm such a perfectionist my fear is that like uh, like it ha everything's happening like this i yes. mean you guys all shoot weddings so you know it's like it's clockwork <gasps> and you said you had like multiple takes of like a, a first I mean, look I didn't do, yeah a first look yeah, the, i've never the, tried that because i know that there was never time for that hmm. i've shot maybe five weddings video i've i've done a lot of photography like a lot of wedding photography mm, but yeah. the video side of things specifically because in photography like yes you could maybe miss the first kiss but you can maybe quickly snap another one. Oh yeah you know what i mean so you like can, you can see you have a lot you there. have more chances to get it right in photography with video like it's a whole different ball game you've got movement you've got like autofocus or manual focus you know, you've got you got to deal with focus. Both you got to deal, and, the, and, the, and then yeah. audio is a massive deal. Like like yeah. you were saying, like if audio is bad, the video is basically useless unless you can somehow video. hide yep. it or get some mm -hmm. bride to redo her entire vows in the closet. And the amount of times I've seen photographers, they're like, "Well, a little grainy, slap black and white on it, easy, a little yeah. cascade preset, yep. done." That's where yeah. we go. Black and white covers a multitude of sins. Is <laughs> but, my uh, for one binge four sixteen or whatever. It's my Bible verse. Honestly, first binge <laughs> sounds like it yeah. sounds biblical. That'd be it's good. It's one of the twelve tribes, my friend Benjamin. Right, we let's go. go. But then <laughs> it's funny because I feel like for video, 
I watch a lot of wedding videos and I'll see like suddenly it cuts to black and white during the reception and I'm like, oh, "Oh, yeah, they get a little noisy there. And they're like, hey, my white balance was completely off. I'm so sorry. It's like I was at 5,000 Kelvin and it was 30, it was 2,200 Kelvin in there. It's just oranges all get out. I couldn't do anything. Like, okay. I get it. And that's the other thing the conditions that you are walking into are so Mm -hmm. unpredictable. You have no control. And it's like, thank God the A7S3 exists. Because before that, oh man, the cameras we had to deal with like receptions where it's candle lit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like when you only had eight bit, whew. no ten bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like obviously the ceremonies are usually pretty good. Like they're well lit, whether it's outdoors <laughs> or in a venue. But I, it you, depends. most most you, most usually scenarios. there's a lot of light. Yeah, yeah. often in bad directions. But, this, but the receptions are always terrible. Like it's always they mm-hmm. wanted to have that dark vibe, and it's like they don't yeah. think about mm-hmm. the videographer. And then the photographer is also firing off flash yeah. the whole time where you're trying to film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, oh, yeah. So. Stupid photographers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's I'll, me. I'll tell you, I had this one wedding in Houston. A beautiful venue. I think it was at the Houstonian, which is the oh. most like, it's like a hotel, but I'm like, Sounds fancy. we're already in Houston. You're yeah. calling it the Houstonian? <laughs> All right. Okay. The Dallasonian? We don't have that. I don't know. Anyways, they uh, <laughs> had this beautiful like uh, ballroom style set up for the ceremony, like wall to wall windows, like running down the entire side, like gorgeous light coming in. And I, I'm thankfully, I'm like second shooting this thing. I'm like, oh, no pressure on me here. I'm just here just to film it. And the bride, like she's getting ready to walk down the aisle. They're getting ready. Like ceremony's about to start. And then they close all of the blinds. And it goes oh, from no. like this beautifully lit <laughs> to, I believe that we were filming on the 5D Mark II at the time. And we had like an 85 millimeter 1.2. Didn't matter. Yeah. Like did not yeah. matter. It was... It went to like, oh, you got to be at ISO 6400 now yeah. on the 5D Mark II, which is like, <laughs> oh, we're noise city. And it was yeah. the gnarliest, darkest. I'm like, it's like a movie theater in here without a screen. This is so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're like, well, there's a video. And I'm like, hey, man, uh, so glad I'm not editing this. So yeah. sorry about that. Um, good, good luck. luck with that. Good cool. Luck. Okay, yeah. great. Neat video. Yes. Yeah. But I did meet uh, photographer. the photographer for that wedding is like one of my really like one of my really good photographer friends now that like I talk to them all the time and I'm shout like, cool. them out yeah. who are they Lacey Nalpina Lacey used to be Lacey Dagger more than an image photography Ooh, Lacey's nice. the best hmm. and lately Lacey has a viral Instagram and TikTok page okay. for her recently deceased cat oh R.I.P. Harvey Fat Cat Harvey. He's still pulling in views. Oh, he's pulling in the views. <laughs> Homeboy's like thirty pounds. Like Ooh. he was a he was a chonky boy, and it was like, I remember Lacey was like, she had like a a video clip of him go viral, and I'm like, Lacey, if you do not make a TikTok and Instagram, she did blew up, and I was like, Lacey, you're doing it. This incredible, so good. And job, AI Lacey. can make new content for her. So. Yeah, that's there true. you go. Just yeah. bring up, upload those images of that cat. Yeah. Just bring him back. Yep. Yep. He's back. Lives lives on forever. <laughs> This is kind of morbid. How do we transition from this? <laughs> no, this is good. Though. Like, where, Lacey, where do you, you know? where do you sure see AI taking filmmaking? I feel like that's a really good question. I've been seeing some crazy stuff. Yeah, that's only going to get Lee's like, better. what have I not seen? Well, now? Yeah. when like it comes Vietnam to flashback, when it, when it comes, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was tough in the <laughs> trenches, but. No, that I've, I've, I mean, everything I see is just on Twitter and it's hard to even know what's true or not, but like, like <laughs> I assume none of it is full on like human recreation movement, camera movement and stuff like that. Like it's not the same as the way the photos are coming out right now yeah. with like mid journey and Dolly or whatever, but like, sorry, binge, the, you're out of a job. The video side of things. Like, yeah, I don't think so though. No, I don't think so either. I think I, not for what it's going to have a place for sure. Like I think for what we do, it will have a lot more of an impact than other people but like stock footage you could recreate your own stock footage yeah stock footage AI. companies should be sweating I, the, I, I think yeah. that like especially static shots realistic yeah. stuff is still a long ways off you're gonna yeah. be able to obviously tell that it's fake but like we're at the beginning of it like it's like when the internet started right mm-hmm. now and mm-hmm. look where it is now and yeah. I know it's big whenever like I'm getting texts from my uncle like how do I get Jet GPT on my phone I'm like okay like <laughs> yeah yeah I know we've hit the mainstream because yeah. you saw it on the news and now it's yeah. like okay it's yeah. it's you can get it on your phone but it's on the internet just go to your browser and here oh, never mind okay whole thing there. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're out of a job no ever though yeah it's just gonna be supplemental to what we're already doing i think yeah i'm excited about that yeah yeah i think the opportunities might be fewer because Mm -hmm. there's going to be 
you know more companies out there just going with the ari route like yeah uh like headshot photographers have you seen those that like mm-hmm. you can pay like five Upload or a ten bucks or whatever and it'll just make you a ton of headshots mm-hmm. yeah that's the stuff you're like I, I have friends that do you know that for companies yeah. and they just do like 500 people or whatever and that company is just going to be like hey we took some headshots of yep. you on your first day and now we're just gonna we don't need you the anymore side. yeah Definitely on the photo side of things it's yeah way easier for it because it doesn't have to like the camera movement thing is the next crazy mm-hmm. element like that, yeah. that i saw but the photo side of things i think it's going to be getting way too close to what we can actually do i had uh i used a. Uh, like when we uh, were in Yosemite last month, I uh, didn't filming get a thumbnail. The, filming the firefall. Yeah, filming the oh firefalls. Didn't get a thumbnail. So I <laughs> used, used AI for oh. a thumbnail. And uh, I have never had people reach out to me and be like, I love the thumbnail and that. And I literally Whoa. had to write back to them like, that was Uh-oh. AI. Like, it's it, not real. So it's, we're, we're there. We're there. We're like, I didn't realize that was AI. There you go. And the funny thing is, I'm like, that's a nice shot. The, exactly. <laughs> But then in the video, I'm like, he didn't even get that shot. Yeah. Whoa. This so, is a lie. Yeah. Oh so we're there. Gosh. This is it. It's happening. But I think with AI, like you still have to, like that still took me about an hour and a half or two hours to the right to prompts. figure out like the right prompts to tell it what to do and then like correct things. And like, because when, when if you want to correct, like if you don't like one of the images it gives you, you can't be like, just fix that. Yeah. You've got to redo yeah. the whole set mm-hmm. of prompts, right? Yeah. Um, and hope it comes up with something similar. So it's, there's teething issues. But Is that mid-journey? Uh, yeah, Mid Journey V5. So the I latest am one. Really intrigued too, because I talked to Adobe recently and then like they announced it officially. Mm-hmm. They have yeah. Firefly or whatever. Firefly, yeah. which is their ethical uh quote unquote <laughs> okay. um, Not stealing. stock no footage. Because yeah. Mid Journey's all trained on just like every image on the internet. Yep. We just yeah, throw it yeah, into yeah. this thing yeah. and it's like, is that is that okay from a copyright standpoint, guys? And so no probably not like but it's gonna be litigated for years i'm sure yeah but adobe's like hey we we try to go a better way like we're trying to like do it in a way where you do not have to feel guilty as a creator for using things that you shouldn't have and i'm like okay i feel like there's a lot of people that regardless of whether they're like how they feel about it, from a ethical standpoint like you know i don't really feel good about this and adobe's like do you want to feel good and i'm like <laughs> well yeah i kind of want to feel good about it okay cool thanks yep. adobe all right i'll feel good it's interesting but it I feel is. like you are out of a job like quicker than we are <laughs> just from a photo standpoint. I think, I think the thing though is the value in my work isn't like the cool thing, like the small couple on a cliff on Instagram that you could probably redo in AI. Yeah. Right. It's like the moment between the daughter and her grandma or whatever. Mm. And like that kind of stuff, you can, you could make an AI out of it. Like you could make a thing that looks good, but that moment didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So there's no emotional attachment to it. Yeah. Which is the whole point of doing wedding stuff, right? Is like those emotional attachments and the relationships and those like micro interactions and things like that. And that's where I think there's going to be a job for people in those kind of things for a lot longer. Right. Yeah, you're capturing the real moment yeah. that they yeah. want to remember. Yeah. yeah. And like, I'm sure some people like, you know, that don't really care about that kind of stuff will just like, whoa, sure. We can pay a little bit of money to put ourselves in Iceland <laughs> next to a volcano or whatever. And we don't have to do this. And, but, but we the core to, we, of like what, you know, weddings are or whatever, yeah. like is still going to be there. And that's something that can't be replicated with We AI. eloped to the courthouse, but yeah. we made yeah. it look like we were in Iceland. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah. 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 That's for f- fake influencer weddings. <laughs> well, I just feel like, the video world versus photo world kind of like how like everything happens like in like Europe or the UK and the U S it happens in the U S a little while later, like culture wise, mm-hmm. I feel like we're seeing that in versus photo versus video, like photo happens in like five years later videos like, Oh, we're getting that too. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And so I don't know, for example, like everybody was doing and photo world, everybody's like, everybody has a workshop, everybody has conferences, et cetera. Everybody's selling their presets. And now on the video side, everybody's doing that now too. Yeah. But it was a there's a delay getting there, sure. and I feel like for AI stuff, video is harder. Like you were saying, a lot harder to do. But like it's getting there, and it yeah. looks really janky right now. But pretty soon. Yeah, I think the things that are more interesting are the tools you can use, mm. like yeah. all the all the editing stuff or like the culling software and. Um, I've, I've talked to a few friends about like, them worried about, you know, like editing wedding videos and stuff, but it's like, how do you, you have so much of it is feel and stuff. Yeah. Like you could train AI to like figure out the beats in a song and everything mm-hmm. like that. But how are they going to figure out what things to pull out of a yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, speech and everything like that? You're creating the story. Yeah. But like, they as could a, maybe do it still with it. But AI. as a photographer, like why, why shouldn't I be able to upload my stuff to the cloud as I'm shooting 
and then have AI edit my photos while I'm still shooting, I get done, and then I just go, here's the gallery. It's Absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. You, like, should, you, it, you go to bed. Within like five five years, that should be a reality. If so. it's not, like that's going to be... It's no different from the new... Um, I don't know if you edit all your stuff, but like, yeah. like we outsource a lot of yeah. edits, but like it's no different from you just sending all the photos to the cloud, someone else is editing the whole thing, yeah, and yeah. then you're giving it back to the couple. It's just, you get it immediately. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm just imagining the headache from couples that are like, where's our stuff? Why isn't it done yet? The other photographer said it'd be done tonight <laughs> yeah. at the wedding. And you're like, six to eight weeks. Thank you. If anything, yeah. you could use it as a, a value added service. Like, sure. you want the express delivery? $2,000 to like, well, yeah. or like yeah. what I've, I've already, like, you know, I've already done that too. Yeah. I've been like, oh, you want, you want your stuff done like while you're still here? Yeah. Great. Like, yeah. I'm flying into whatever place. I'll stay here for two more days and yeah. edit your stuff. Yeah. But like, yeah, th there's a part of it like where us photographers, some of us like we'll get the stuff done on like Tuesday after mm -hmm. the wedding, oh, yeah. but you'll hold it for a while because you won't, don't want to be like, oh, this person paid me $8,000 exactly. to do their photos. Yeah. And then I'm just going to like give them to them three days later. Of you course. know, it feel, you, there's like a value scarcity, the scarcity yeah, thing yeah. that you want to like make it feel like it took some time. No, none of my clients ever watch this. So don't worry. <laughs> It's, well, it's, it's I've true, never yeah. held on to your photos. It's Yours more comes just, out as soon as it's done. Don't <laughs> you worry. The second it's done. It's more just about, yeah, like the value side of things. So like they paid for this thing. They don't want, you don't want it to make it seem like it was too easy or too yeah. quick to get. I mean, have you, have you ever gone to a restaurant and like been having a good time? You order some drinks or whatever and you're talking and then your food like shows up really fast at like a nice restaurant. Yeah. You're like, whoa, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't yeah, want yeah, this yeah. yet. Well, yeah. Like, I, I, it's not, this isn't fast food. Sure. Sometimes, like, when my wife and I will get a rare date out and, like, the food comes, like, fast, I'm like, oh, I don't, I didn't want this this quick. So then, I wanted back. to, like, yeah, take it back. Yeah. I want, I want to, like, live this experience a little yeah. longer, like, anticipate it, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I feel like that'd be the same thing with, you know, if you got your photos, like, night of, mm -hmm. there's no, like, no anticipation. It's just like, mm -hmm. So that would be the interesting thing. I don't know. I will say there's this Chinese restaurant in town, and we tried it for the first time. We Delivery. Like, on their website. Not DoorDash or anything. Just, like, through their website. Like, order online. And it's like, it'll take, like, 40 minutes estimate. We ordered it at, like, 1 p.m. And this thing's, like, across town. It's, like, a 10-minute drive away. And 14 minutes later, there was a man on our porch. Like, here's your food. And I'm like, thank you, How? but did How? you... <laughs> cook this yeah. like, just in a roaming food truck i know i was like how did this happen like i'm very impressed but you know they're like the phone's right run yeah get yeah, in yeah. the car <laughs> yeah. go 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 like, what is happening it's good stuff it's great <laughs> we're it's living great. in the future man this is it here now it's ai cooks they actually have seen kitchens. i've seen i've seen some robot yeah, Mr. cooks Beast, too yeah yeah isn't it uh, White Castle that has the robot cook? Mm, uh, there's multiple places. Like, it's like an arm. It's like dang. just frying fries. And there's, <laughs> what, there was an airport I was at recently, and they had a, a cocktail robot. Mm, and it was okay. a vending machine that like has a robot arm in it. And it's like, you order your drink, and then you literally see these robot arms like mix these drinks, and then it just spits it out. I'm like, that's... Were they playing the cantina music from Star Wars? Just like... Copper yeah, there's a, there's a coffee robot at the Austin airport and you can do it in those zzz, 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 and here's your cool. coffee. But I feel like, especially for fast food, the whole premise of fast food was like a factory line creating the exact same thing every single yeah, time. Yeah. Consistency. So like from a robotization standpoint, they're, the ma the creator's like, yes, that's exactly the most what we want. Yeah. We yeah. want that. Like every in and out animal style must taste the exact same as every other one. I've never had it in and out. Still what? never had it. Can we, so can we order it? Is it in and out here? Oh, yeah, we're, it's in and out here. We're ending this and going to yeah. do that. <laughs> and goodbye.